Welcome to Walpole 5.0. I'm Chief John Carmichael. Today is March 21st, 2017. Spring is here. We're getting winter behind us. And before we get into the log entries, just a couple of things to mention. The first is our Student Police Advisory Council, or STUPAC. We have uh, proceeded into the uh, ride-along phase of the program. So all of our kids, we have about 15 or 16 in the program, all Walpole High School kids from freshman to senior that are, uh, have been involved in the program this year and will now go on ride-alongs with police officers. Uh, and obviously they're not the primary unit, but they will go out there and uh, work out like a four-hour block, four-hour shift with uh, while being assigned to an officer and go out there and answer some calls and uh, work out there on the street. And the kids really enjoyed it last year. I think it was really eye-opening for them because they uh, realized that there is some um, things that occur in Walpole. So they were, it was good for them, good learning experience, and we look forward to the kids coming in this year and uh, finishing out the, the ride-alongs as well. So wanted to mention on this Friday, April 25th, we're doing High Five Friday in conjunction with our schools. And this was a, a program that actually started out in Northampton where they had High Five Friday where police officers, you know, while they were on their patrols, went into some of the schools in their community and um, greeted the kids at the door and did some high fives and stuff. And there ended up being a lot of complaints about it for some reason and some, some people objected to it and the program came to a halt as fast as it started up. So there are a lot of departments uh, southeast on Southeast Massachusetts that are going to participate in this program this coming Friday and I know that uh, Mass Chief sent out an email and within the first 30 minutes it was over 25 police departments that were signed up to do it uh, and basically the officers are just gonna stop by our schools as we do anyways every day and um, greet some of the kids and high-five them maybe not so much as the high school because it's not cool for it to, to high-five the, uh, the cops in high school but some of the other schools, the middle schools and elementary schools. So we think it'll be a fun thing uh, just to, to say hi to the kids this Friday. So we look forward to that. Uh, and that's pretty much it for notifications and getting into the log on March 14th. Uh, that was the day of the storm. We had a series of well-being checks and I'm glad to see this because a lot of times, you know, we were involved in a snowstorm and it's family members reaching out so that we can check on uh, elderly, their senior uh, parents, or just on a neighbor or anything like that. And it's, it's always very important to check on them when we have severe weather or even in the summertime when it's hot and the air conditioning is not working well, that we check on our seniors. So we went on a couple of well-being checks, the first one uh, being uh, uh, near the high school and the second one down on East Street and East Walpole. Uh, we responded after requests by family members or friends to check on them and found out that both uh, individuals were okay. Uh, we sh and we always encourage it. A lot of times we'll have family members that live out of state and they have some concern. Maybe they're calling their parents or, or a loved one back here and they're not answering the phone and they become concerned. So always willing to get out and check on it and make sure that everyone is okay. So we call those well-being checks. Uh, responded to a poll fire. This occurred at the, where the new Dunkin' Donuts is going in on Old Post Road. And on this occasion, uh, it actually ended up being the um, connections that were going to be going to the new facility there. And um, that fire started up on the utility pole. Uh, Walpole Fire Department responded as well as Eversource to put that out and uh, take care of the damage that was, that was caused. On March 15th, um, there was Officer Giblin uh, dealt with some overnight uh, parking issues mostly in East Walpole area where people were still parked out on the street. That would cause a problem for the uh, plow drivers because that was, that was the next day following the storm and there was still a lot of snow out there on the ground and on the roadway, so uh, Officer Giblin went out and issued some warnings for that. Uh, there was a, an abandoned 911 call at 9 Walcott. Officer Giblin uh, responded and spoke to that person. The reason why I put this one in there is because if you ever do accidentally call 911, um, Try not to hang up if you can stay on the line or even call back just so that the uh, dispatchers know and the officers know responding that it's likely that it's an abandoned call because typically if someone calls 911, we're still responding. So that uh, with the way we have it now, we have what's called next-gen 911. So when you call 911 from a landline, 
from your home, that's automatically going to show us a Google map, Google Earth of that location, uh, as well as give us the address information. So we're going to be coming anyways uh, if it's an abandoned call, but if, uh, if, if you can, stay on the line just to let them know that you made a mistake, and that way uh, they'll know that up upon arrival. Um, sometimes you will have abandoned 911 calls where there at, is actually something else occurring, uh, whether it be an assault and battery or some type of uh, disturbance going on where somebody may force the person to hang up the call before we get there. So we are going to come anyway. On 3-15, March 15th, we had a bolo be on the lookout. And I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, but we got this from Sharon PD, and this was put out to area police departments that they had an attempted kidnapping. Uh, and there were uh, three African-American males who were operating a white sedan, and this had a uh, black trim on it. And this appeared to have a uh, yellow registration plate, which may be consistent with a New York license plate. Uh, and these, these three male individuals went in, and they attempted to drag the female uh, manager uh, from the Best Western out to their car. And there was a, a struggle that ensued, and the victim was successful in, in getting away from uh, these assailants. And they ended up uh, jumping into the car and fleeing out onto Route 1. Now, we just did, several months ago, we did have uh, a shooting that occurred at the O'Connell Lodge, which is directly across the street from there. And during that shooting, uh, there was uh, several males, who, uh, some of which we've identified as being uh, from Brockton. Uh, that were involved in that shooting. We recovered a handgun at the time and uh, that they had discarded in Walpole. Uh, and that, that's an ongoing case, but this uh, tracked back to Brockton, involved in a criminal enterprise there. And um, I'm not sure if this is a coincidence or not. However, uh, that's pretty close to home as far as the other incident. And we, there's a thought that these individuals may have come back to looking for uh, a witness or a victim involved in the other crime and hit and went to the wrong hotel um, because there was no real rhyme or reason why uh, through the victim why these individuals would show up and try and kidnap her so uh, that is being looked into um, but at this time that uh, those individuals still at large and that vehicle has not been located either uh, re a rollover, officers responded to Route 1 northbound at the 95 overpass this is um, in Sharon, and we went there to assist with a rollover accident that occurred. And I'm very happy to say that this, this crash here involved an adult as well as a child who were entrapped in the motor vehicle. It came in that way. It was reported that uh, people were trapped inside the car. And uh, that the, uh, upon arrival, the occupants were able to free themselves from the vehicle prior to officer's arrival. And uh, Miraculous, miraculously, there was no injuries, and um, that's, that's great to see, and we're very happy for that. We actually we had a rollover in Walpole a couple weeks ago as well on Bullet Street, same type of uh, situation. It was a, a baby in that car. That car flipped over twice prior to hitting the telephone pole, and uh, only minor injuries uh, in the occupants from that crash. Uh, and really, the point here is that uh, these, these car seats that we have today um, and, and seat belts and having those. I can't stress enough how important that is because they do save lives and they did save lives in the crash that we had last week as well as this crash here. We have a little child involved uh, and um, typically when these types of crashes turn into fatalities is because the person was ejected from the vehicle uh, and when they're, they're strapped in there right and uh, the car seats are installed correctly um, it's, it makes for a much safer um, situation there. So uh, speaking of which, we do have two officers on the department who are uh, certified and trained technicians uh, to install car seats. And if you ever need to make sure that um, you have an infant car seat that needs to be checked or and or installed, we can, we can assist you with that. You just have to call the station and make an appointment. Walk away, a boy in crisis. And I put this in here because Officer Crown did an amazing job on this call. He responded down to the area of, of Lincoln Road. This was a boy from Longview who uh, is an 11-year-old um, resident who lives at Longview. And he was involved in a crisis situation, had walked away from the home. And Officer Crown located that individual. And he was in the street. And he was, uh, he was sitting down in the street. And he was having um, 
uh, obvious signs of being in a crisis type of situation. And, you know, typically the response with that could, could have um, been to play hardball and get the kid up and drag him off and get him back into school. But Officer Cron didn't do that. He, he went there, he met with the kid, he introduced himself, he sat down with the kid. We made sure that um, they were safe uh, where they were. And Officer Crown was able to use his communication skills to, to be able to um, diffuse that situation, make the kid feel better, and on his own uh, fruition to, to walk back to the school and go back to school. Uh, and you know, he's policing is becoming more like um, being a social worker and sometimes acting as a role as like a parent would act. And that's what Officer Crown did in this, this job here, this situation. And, um, you know, we really have to uh, commend him for our job well done on that. Um, the, some of these kids come from very difficult backgrounds and um, very difficult environments where they came from. And they've been through a lot. Some of them are traumatized, and Officer Crown did a great job in dealing with that. Um, March 18th, there was an arrest of an individual in Sector 3, which is West Walpole, and this was for assault and battery. On March 18th, we had a verbal argument uh, between family members. This was in Sector 2, also South Walpole, and um, peace was restored there, and I put that in because a lot of times this is what we do. We're, we have to go to these calls, we have a disturbance, we're there as a mediator to help rectify the situation, and they were able to restore peace at this call. Harassment, um, a caller reports a disturbance at the address. We found out that um, someone that lives at the home was being harassed by a person in Memphis, Tennessee. We notified that person, um, and uh, hopefully that's, that's going to stop. We made contact with the person that was, that was involved in this harassment issue. Uh, we were able to obtain their phone number and everything. So hopefully that will stop. Arrests, we had two residents arrested at Longview Farm uh, for assault and battery, dangerous weapon, i.e. a shod foot, and unarmed robbery. These were two individuals that have been involved in multiple other situations um, at that location. And as a result, this case here, we received a 911 call. There was a, a Longview resident who was uh, allegedly jumped uh, they attempted to rob him of marijuana, or that's what was that was was stated to us. They kicked this individual while they were down, which is the two with the shod foot, and um, the vic the victim did reference uh, some stolen marijuana. So we responded down there. We arrested both of these individuals because they have a past and they have uh, some past issues with violent types of activities like this. The good thing, and I'll get into it, is that these are juveniles. We arrested them, we brought them back to the police station, we booked and processed them. And what happens is we notify juvenile probation. So juvenile probation takes the case, they take into consideration their past record, um, which we have arrested these individuals multiple times in the past, and now have developed a track record, they've developed a history of this going on. So what, what will typically happen in this type of case is probation will get in contact with the department and through uh, DCF in Longview on whether or not these individuals can go back to that location because that is their home. Can they go back there under the, um, under the uh, parenting of Longview Farm? And, and this time uh, Longview said no. They refused to accept them back down there. And as a result, probation was able to hold these offenders uh, at, uh, at uh, what we call um, an ALP or an alternative lockup program. So they're basically transported to a lockup program and they're kept there. Another good thing that they did was that probation was able to arrange this so that one individual went to the Brockton um, alternative lockup program and one individual went to the Worcester alternative lockup program. Um, now we have to transport them there and drop them off there um, and then they have to go to court the next day. But this is what you know, we, this is a good thing because we need them to do that. And in this type of situation, um, you know, the vast majority of kids are very good. But in this situation here, you have some people that are multiple offenders. And through probation and, and in cooperation, um, 
with Longview, they're able to, to go where they belong. They need to be locked up. And that's what happened here. So I'm very happy uh, that it turned out that way. Uh, and in the, at the end of the day, the victim who's been uh, victimized has also can actually sleep better at night knowing that they're not there. Protective custody, we responded to a report uh, in Walpole Center at a bar. And Officer Haber, O'Connor, and Vince Aguera went down there. They, they um, were able to locate an unresponsive female who had drank too much. And uh, as a result, uh, beyond the point of putting this person in protective custody, bringing them to the police station, we brought them to a detoxification center at Norwood Hospital uh, so they could detox uh, appropriately there in a medical setting. Erratic operator. So we had a report of a, an erratic operator on, uh, on Route 1 at the Gulf Station. Officer Haber located that vehicle um, by the big Y. Uh, it turns out that the vehicle had a revoked registration due to uh, lack of insurance on that motor vehicle. Now, as I mentioned before, sometimes uh, if it's a expired license or expired registration, something like that, we'll try and help the person right there on, on roadside go online, get, connect in with the registry, and try, try and re-register or relicense themselves there. In this case, you can't do that because there's an issue with insurance, so they have to get the insurance binder and everything in order to, to fix that. Um, so in this case here, Officer Haber had to cite that individual and also tow the vehicle because you cannot let it operate further in the event that they get into a crash and then they're uh, uninsured. An erratic operator was also reported on Washington Street at Common Street. We responded to that one and um, was gone on arrival. And you know, these are, we see those a lot uh, most of the time at night when people are driving, uh, operating erratically. And many times when we do catch up and stop these vehicles, it, it could be an impaired driver or distracted driving type of situation. Uh, hit and run, there was a report of a mailbox struck on Washington Street. Officer O'Connor responded, and this vehicle struck the mailbox on the wrong side of the road uh, and then fled the scene. Uh, the next day, the officers on the day shift were able to locate that vehicle at another location within Walpole um, and made contact with the um, operator of that vehicle then connected them back in with the victims whose mailbox was struck. And then there was a, um, an agreement between them that uh, they could seek some restitution um, and make sure that uh, they, you know, the victims were taken care of and that the, uh, the uh, person who struck the mailbox was also taken care of. And in this case, it was a, a young operator, uh, inexperienced, and you know, probably s scared to the fact that um, they hit something in the car and, and um, got so scared that they went home. So lesson learned on that one. Uh, there was an arrest, uh, assault and battery, an individual was arrested by Officer Haber for an assault and battery, and um, this individual was apparently being very aggressive towards somebody, and um, as a result, that arrest was made. Not, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize, it was for assault, not just assault and battery. So Officer Haber was on that call as well. ID theft, a caller on uh, East Walpole reported that they were involved in a scam involving uh, a checking account, but also a clearinghouse giveaway. Now, last week we mentioned that um, an individual uh, senior had uh, sent money, $16,000, out to California um, to participate in this type of clearinghouse. And uh, again, very dangerous, something that we need to talk to our seniors about, make sure that they don't withdraw money and send it off to uh, any of these scam clearinghouse giveaways, sweepstakes, any of that stuff. They're, they're very common. Don't send money in. Don't send money to sweepstakes or, uh, or clearinghouses. Uh, there was a report of a fight. Uh, reporting party reports a fight in progress. Uh, we responded down there to a Main Street location. It was at a company. And when we got there, uh, the fight involved employees uh, who worked there. And basically, the um, individual who was uh, running the show um, had uh, exchanged some words with some other individuals uh, that work there. And uh, upon the officer's arrival, they detected a, a strong odor of an alcoholic beverage coming from the person uh, who instigated the fight. And as a result, uh, the officers placed that person in protective custody. This was during the day. 
uh, while the business was being run, so they placed that person in protective custody, brought them back to the station. Peace was restored back at the scene for the fight, um, and uh, as a result, no charges are taking place here, um, as the victims, you know, did not want to um, pursue this. So that call uh, ended okay. Stolen medication. Um, this was a school in East Walpole reported that there was uh, medication stolen from the nurse's office. Now we are, this is an ongoing investigation, but there is a report done, and typically what happens here is we need to find out if the um, people who oversee these drugs, uh, first of all, if they're controlled substances, or if they're just like over-the-counter stuff, if they're controlled substances, and the, the nurse is there, or there's somebody there that is registered with the DEA, then we have to complete what's called the DEA Form 106, which is um, a notification placed to the DEA for any uh, controlled substances that are lost, stolen, et cetera. Um, so that, we're still working on that case there, but um, there was a, apparently a significant amount of pills that were, that were taken. So we'll be looking into that. Uh, a suspended driver's license, Officer Powers on a motor vehicle stop. This was on Route 1. He discovered that the individual, the operator, had a suspended driver's license. The operator was cited and um, basically that person will be summoned into court uh, and Officer, um, he, Officer Powers transported the operator back to the station for, to make a, um, a, an arrangement for a ride. Ordinance, we had somebody come into the police station, turn in some smoke bombs and some flares that they had in their home. Um, one quick note is not always good to don't transport that stuff, don't put it in your car um, and bring it to the police station or bring it into the police station. Uh, that can obviously um, result in um, some serious consequences, so uh, we ask that you don't do that, but if you do have stuff like that, notify us and we can make arrangements to, to have it removed. Hit and run was reported, a motor vehicle crash. Uh, this occurred more towards North Walpole. Moments later, after there was a bolo put out on the vehicle that was involved in this crash, officers were, um, other officers uh, observed that same vehicle on West Street by the train bridge, were able to stop that vehicle, identify who the operator was and then cite that person for leaving the scene of that crash without making themselves known. So um, good eye out on that one. And a road rage incident, this was on March 18th. Uh, Officer Doherty responded to a report of a road rage incident. This was an ongoing like uh, situation going on as they were traveling down Route 1 by the, by the mall uh, and basically was coming southbound on Route 1. The dispatcher did a great job. They kept this caller on the line as, as they tried to uh, strategically get officers in place to stop these vehicles. Uh, and during that time, the victim had reported that one of the individuals in the yellow car had um, uh, threatened them with a gun. So what ended up happening, uh, the dispatch continued to keep that person on the line. Officer Doherty caught up, saw these two vehicles, caught up to them on um, Route 1 near the I-95 on-ramp in Sharon. Uh, and Officer Doherty, as well as other officers, uh, conducted a stop on that vehicle. It was done in the sense of a felony uh, stop, which means that um, the officers don't approach that vehicle. They end up calling out the occupants inside and proning them out type of thing because they now have belief that there can be a weapon invo involved. Um, and as such, they take precautions and they, they conduct what's called a felony stop. They did that. There was no firearm located. It, fi it turns out that the individual, uh, during this confrontation, they did threaten the individual with a gun. However, they did not display the gun. It was not shown uh, and no gun was found. So what we did find was an open container of marijuana in the front seat, um, pipes, grinders, that type of stuff. And as a result, that marijuana is seized. And despite the legalization of marijuana, you cannot have an open container of marijuana in the passenger compartment of the vehicle. And we continuously have been running into this. People have the notion that since we've legalized it, that you can drive around with it in your front seat. And you cannot. So we um, cited them with an open container of marijuana, seized the marijuana, and uh, gave them the citation. The, uh, it turns out also that the operator, the individual who apparently had the gun, had a suspended driver's license, and they will be summoned into court for operating without a license. 
protective custody, uh, um, received a call in East Walpole for somebody that was, um, had come home and highly intoxicated and unable to care for themselves. So we responded down there, placed that individual in the protective custody, um, and later released to another um, person who could take care of them. A pedestrian was struck. This is on um, March 17th. Actually, prior to that, um, also on March 17th, almost they were around the same time, but not quite. There was a re report of a, a structure fire on Washington Street, and um, this uh, fire was working when when officers and uh, fire department personnel got there. Fire department did a great job of getting in there and uh, getting this fire out. And I know that was kind of a uh, persistent one because it ended up getting up inside of the, the roof and everything, but um, fire did a great job knocking that one down and the officers uh, just blocking that off. So if you saw Washington Street near Cumberland Farms being blocked off uh, last week, that's what that was all about. And then following that we had a, a pedestrian struck in Walpole Center and this was, um, this was, you know, we have half day, it was a half day of school and when we have a half day, the students will get out of school and they'll converge on the square. And basically, um, there was a student who was on East Street, near, kind of near the TD Bank, and had, tr had crossed over, crossed um, uh, two northbound uh, lanes of traffic, and then proceeded across the street when, um, and into the, the southbound lane, and a, a vehicle had uh, struck a young man there. Uh, and who sustained some injuries. Uh, we did notify MedFlight. MedFlight was too far out at the time, and by the time they got here, um, the Walpole Fire Department and ambulance would have been able to transport the, the young man into Children's Hospital, uh, which we did. And he, we got him in there, and thankfully, the student is going to be okay. And we, he's home now, so that's great news as well. And we wish him uh, a full and speedy recovery. And you know the the message is always you know to talk to your kids about the half days. Uh, we try and put it out all the time that uh, when there's a half days, you know the kids are going to converge on the center and they're going to they're going to be running around. And you know we have to keep in a, we have to be cautious. We have to keep an extra eye out um, at those times to make sure that we uh, the kids are safe. So um, this was a great job. Austin Foley, who was our crash reconstructionist, will be. Reconstructing that crash uh, to find out whether or not um, there is there would be any um, uh, violations of of the law with that with that operator, um, and that will take some time to to figure all that out and to um, reconstruct that collision. Uh, but glad the young man's doing well. Suspicious vehicle. Officer O'Connor was out with a suspicious vehicle at Chili's. Uh, it ended up being that that was just some of the workers that had stayed late. Uh, there was a crash on Fisher Street where a deer was struck. We haven't had many of those this year, so um, threw that one in there. The ACO responded, um, but the, there was no motor vehicle. The, so somebody crashed into the deer, and I'm sure they caused some damage to the vehicle, but uh, the vehicle did not stay. There was a health hazard, a syringe found on Union and Pleasant Street. Uh, Detective Benner went out, and he uh, responded and, and picked that up. We mentioned these just because we don't want anybody to touch those. If you if you come across syringes that are in a playground, on the sidewalk, in public areas, certainly don't touch it. Um, we'll have somebody come out and we'll dispose of it. Um, we'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, there was an arrest of an individual suspected on multiple warrants. Those warrants were issued by the Walpole Police Department. And we this is a call that I probably mentioned either last week or the week before, but there was an a individual, a couple of people that were involved in a, an assault. That assault involved a knife, where there was a knife that was brandished. It also uh, involved a, a car that was stolen, uh, money that was stolen, as well as the victim trying to stop the individual from taking the car in the first place was also struck and ended up on the hood of the vehicle. Um, but was able to um, get himself off of that vehicle and uh, into safety. So we did identify who the suspect was. We were able to seek and obtain arrest warrants. We located that individual and um, placed them under arrest, and they will be charged with uh, multiple crimes. Following this arrest, we um, were doing an attempt to serve an arrest warrant. 
While on scene, the officers had discovered some uh, drugs and drug paraphernalia that were in plain view. As a result, the individual uh, was removed from the home and the, the home was secured. So the officers that were on scene secured the residence. They backed off. The officers um, hold the post there and secure that scene. Uh, went back to the police station. They wrote out uh, an, a search warrant affidavit, submitted that to the court, and were granted a search warrant to go back to that home. Um, officers and detectives went back and executed the search warrant at this residence. And while they were there, they were able to locate um, a significant amount of drugs. And the breakdown of those drugs is, is uh, the officers were able to recover and seize 22 grams of heroin, 10 grams of fentanyl, 27 um, benzodiazepine type pills, as well as uh, some marijuana plants. And um, so in this case here, the big issue is that these are the drugs that are killing people. These are the drugs that are causing the 138 overdoses that we've had in Walpole since 2011. This, this is a problem. And you know, there's nothing that I enjoy more than seeing people who are dealing this poison out in the streets of Walpole go to jail. I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because they're bringing this poison, they're putting on the streets in Walpole and, and in our region, um, and it's, one of, it's the worst epidemic we've ever seen and it's causing all kinds of problems. It's tearing at the fabric of every community in Massachusetts. Um, and we're talking about trafficking weight. That's trafficking weight heroin, and trafficking weight fentanyl, uh, as well as these pills. The pills, the benzodiazepine pills, are the ones that are, are mixed in with the opiates that are causing our overdoses. And this person, you know, this is intent to distribute these drugs and probably together. And that this is the mixture of those drugs um, is causing overdoses. So um, I'm very glad that we uh, recovered these drugs, arrested this person. Um, and I'll tell you that it takes extreme caution on the officer's part because um, when fentanyl is around, it, it, can, it contaminates everything around it. So uh, money, tables, tabletops, whatever else, when that uh, drug is being processed, it subjects the person to harm. It subjects the first responders, the police officers that are there to harm. And we've actually seen officers and first responders around the country actually go into an overdose because they have um, either breathed it in or somehow consumed um, the contaminated area from the fentanyl. So great job uh, on uh, Officer Doherty, who was the one who initially initiated that, and then uh, as well the officers on that shift and our detectives who sought the search warrant. Great job. Um, actually, I have, I'll just kind of pull this up, but this is a picture of some of the drugs that you will, that we recovered. And uh, as you see, that, that white powdery substance is the drug that uh, is fentanyl. And then the, the more brown looking substance is the, uh, is the heroin. And then the pills are the benzodiazepines. These are just a couple of the, the marijuana plants that were there. And the reason why we, we seized the marijuana plants is, as you know, it's legal. Uh, the problem is you can, you're limited to the amount of plants. And, if you're one individual, lone individual, then you can only have six plants. If there's two people that live in the home, you can have up to 12 plants. In this case, the, there was six plants for one individual, so we seized the other two plants because they cannot lawfully have those uh, plants in the house because it is against the new 94G statute. So um, the next one is me. Sometimes the chief gets out there and... Uh, I stop some cars or if I see somebody speeding or something like that, I'll get involved. I'll, um, and uh, this, I actually, I stopped the vehicle in East Walpole uh, yesterday and as a result the vehicle started to flee. I ended up catching up to that vehicle, it pulled over to the left facing oncoming traffic for some reason and within um, a few seconds the individual was extremely agitated that I had pulled them over and they threw the vehicle in reverse, did like a three-point turn, went back the other way. I also turned around, went back after the vehicle, it pulled into a driveway, and then the individual uh, who was operating that vehicle ended up 
uh, jumping out and then refusing to follow uh, commands that were given to them for officer safety reasons. And typically that means get back inside of the vehicle. And a uh, quick lesson is that when, whenever you're stopped by the police, you always just remain in the vehicle um, be, just for officer safety purposes. If you jump out of the vehicle, come back towards the officer, most nine times out of ten, probably ten times out of ten, the officer is going to ask you to step back in the car uh, for their safety, and we that's just what we do. That's tactically we do that here in Massachusetts. Uh, I had done that as well. Um, he had come running back toward me uh, on the stop. I had asked him several times to just have a seat in the vehicle for my safety and his. Um, and then I got all, all I really got out of that was some uh, posturing, some threats, uh, and an escalation of. Um, basically just uh, refuse, refusing to comply with everything. Uh, at some point, I went to arrest that individual, um, and that individual became assaultive. And as a result, um, there was a struggle that ensued, and um, for some time, several, uh, several minutes before backup arrived, able to put that individual in handcuffs and arrest them for multiple charges, including failing to stop um, for the police officer in the beginning, as well as assault and battery resisting arrest. Uh, and uh, one of the things that was said during this uh, situation, and, and will make the hair on the back of any police officer's head stand up, is that uh, he mentioned his record, his criminal record, and that um, something to the effect of, you better go check my criminal record and find out who you're dealing with. And when you hear that, when a police officer hears that, that's a problem because a lot of times, uh, and in this case, the individual is on probation, and that means usually they don't want to go back to jail. So um, referencing something like that is scary for the police and uh, ends up being the case. There was a significant criminal history uh, and on probation, and as a result, uh, no bail was issued. So that individual was arrested and transported to uh, Norfolk County House of Correction. And so that's that. Uh, that is it for today, March 21st, 2017, and this is Walpole 5.0, and I thank you for joining me. See you next time.